the history of Jesus' birth, death, and what it means by Elijah Muhammad. This book is a compilation of articles from Elijah Muhammad and you will see that he teaches or he thought that Jesus wasn't crucified, he was actually stabbed to death. Let's have a look. Page 20, article number 8, September 7, 1957. Jesus is killed. After the Jew called the authorities to come and take Jesus, they sent two officers to arrest him. There was a reward of $1,500 if he were arrested and brought in alive, $2,500 in gold if he were brought in dead. Now hold on for a second. Just bear in mind that he says that if Jesus is brought in alive, the reward is $1,500. Dollars. dollars. But if he's brought in dead, that's 2500 in gold. So we are to wonder if in the first century AD, uh, people were actually paying in dollars. Moving back, moving right along. The two officers wanted this reward, so both ran to take Jesus and arrest him. They arrived almost at the same time. The two laid hands on Jesus and began quarreling over who was the first to lay his hands on Jesus. While arguing over whose prisoner Jesus actually was, Jesus asked the two officers if they would allow him to, te to tell who touched him first. The two officers agreed. Jesus said, the one on the right touched me about three-tenths of a second before the one on the left. The officer on the left accepted the decision and left. Then Jesus and the other officers started walking down the street to turn him over to the authorities. While going on, the officer said to Jesus, Since you came here to give yourself up to be killed, why not let me kill you and you will not feel it? But if I take you to them, the infidel Jews, they want to torture you, make you suffer. I will kill you in an instant and you will never feel death. Furthermore, I will get more for taking you there dead than alive. I am a poor man with a large family. Why not let me get the larger, the larger reward since you came to die? Jesus, Jesus agreed and said to the officer, Come and do it. The officer took Jesus to an old deserted storefront, which was brought up to protect the store from possible stones thrown by boys that might break the glass. The officer said to Jesus, Stand with your back against this door front and put your hands up. Jesus, being a brave man and ready to die, obeyed the officer and stretched forth his hands like a cross, not on a cross, but made a cross of himself. The officer drew a small sword-like knife from his, from, from his side which looked like the American hunting knife. Only this little sword is sharp on both sides of the blade to about two-thirds of its length. He plunged the sword through the heart of Jesus with such force, such force that it went clear through and stuck itself into the boards that he was standing against and left him as a crucifix. By Jesus having such strong nerves, his death was so instant that the blood stopped circulating at once, and Jesus was left stiff with both arms stretched in the same position as he put them when ordered by the officer. The authorities came and took him from the boards, from the boards where the knife had pinned Jesus' body. When Joseph heard of his son Jesus' death, he came and got the body from the authorities. Just remember that uh, Joseph had the body from the authorities. He secured some Egyptian embalmers to embalm the body to last for 10,000 years. Joseph wanted the body embalmed to last as long as the earth petrified, but was not able to pay for such embalming. The Egyptian embalmers put the body into a glass tube filled with a certain chemical known only to the Egyptian embalmers that will keep one's body looking the same 
as when it died. That if that that is if they get the body at a certain time for many thousands of years, as long as no air is allowed to enter the tube that the body is in. They buried the body in the old city, Jerusalem. His body lies in the tomb in such manner that it reflects in four different directions. This was done to keep the enemies from knowing in just what direction the real body is lying. No Christian is allowed to see the body unless they pay a price of $6,000 and must get a certificate from the Pope of Rome. The tomb is guarded by Muslims. When Christians are allowed to see Jesus' body, they are stripped of weapons, handcuffed, handcuffed behind their backs as, as well, and, excuse me, and well-armed Muslim guards take them into the tomb. But Muslims, the brothers of Jesus, can go to see his body at any time without charge. Now bear in mind, it says that Muslims guard the body, however, they must get a certificate from the Pope of Rome. I found that real strange. Now for the record, for those who don't know, I'm giving medical nature classes. And here, that's the flyer. Okay? So, those who are interested, feel free to holler at me. If you're not interested, it's cool. But I recommend everybody, I recommend that everybody who has not yet seen the video Kemet and Ma'at before Judaism, Christianity and Islam, then watch it. It has about 300,000 views and really deserves to have a lot more. Um, I just want to let everyone know who's gonna, who's, who's gonna, uh, who's listening now and who's going to listen to this, uh, this, uh, stream in the future. I just had a, my first Metanetia class by Brother Shaka today, and I've had other, uh, Metanetia lessons by other teachers, and I can tell you right now, the brother is the best in the game. He is, uh, that, that was one of the best classes I've ever had, ever. So if you're interested in learning the meta nature, if you're interested in getting the basics of it, Brother Shaka is an awesome teacher. Get with him, and it's extremely affordable. This brother is giving us his time and his skills, and he's basically giving it away. I mean, I, you know, I just consider it a donation, you know what I'm saying? So if anybody's interested in learning the meta nature, get with this brother right here. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome teacher. And I'll end with that. Hotep Senu, Hena Senut. This is Julie, also known as Servant of Yah, and I'm currently taking the Medu Netra classes with Brother Shaka, and it has been an amazing experience. Only two lessons so far, and I feel like um, I've been taking the classes for months, just with the uh, how in depth he goes into the vocabulary words, um, the construction of the language, the grammar. Um, it's been immeasurable, um, the experience. And one thing that comes across hands down is his uh, extreme passion for teaching this to anyone who is willing to learn and has a, a, an interest in learning. So I highly suggest um, if you are interested, even a minimal interest, that uh, you subscribe to the classes with Brother Shaka. Um, it's such a nominal amount for how much you get. Uh, I know like our last class was uh, over two and a half hours. It felt like two minutes, but because that's how, you know, involved you are in what he's teaching and how he teaches and how compassionate he is about what he teaches. Um, also with sharing materials free of charge, uh, no question, no doubt. Um, it's just what he does. He doesn't have to, but he does. And so I just wanted to give a short testimonial um, about the class and the effectiveness of the class. And uh, all of that is attested to uh, how studied Brother Shaka is. Uh, so I highly recommend anyone with a minimal interest that you do sign up for the Medunetia class.
Hotep. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, which is Ma'at Forever. Don't forget to watch the video entitled Kemet and Ma'at. Don't forget to share Kemet and Ma'at on my channel on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, or other social media that you use. Email, text messages, you name it. Those who wish to donate can do so on paypal.me slash maatforever.